Good morning, Sabbath School members. We're happy to have you with us today. It's a beautiful Sabbath morning. We're so appreciative that you were able to come and attend. We also want to uh, ask, uh, I'm thankful that those of you watching television or on the internet, and hope you'll enjoy and receive a blessing from our Sabbath School lesson today. Before we begin, let's have a word of prayer. Our most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you so very much for the many blessings that thou hast given us. Father, we're so very thankful for the Holy Spirit and the gifts that he is, brings to us as individuals in our church that we might glorify you and be an example to all those around about us. Lord, we thank you for this lesson. Be with us now as we study. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, this morning I'd like to ask if you wouldn't mind opening your Bibles. There are several places where we find uh, the gifts of the Spirit uh, as they're mentioned in the Bible. Probably the main one that we think of most is in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And it talks about uh, there, I'm going to be reading from the New American Standard Bible. This is now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren. I do not want you to be unaware. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to the mute idols. However, you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus is accursed, and no one says, Jesus is Lord except by the Spirit. Now there are a variety of gifts by some, but the same Spirit. And there's a variety of ministries and the Lord, same Lord, and there are a variety of effects, but the same God, who works all things in all persons. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, and to another the word of knowledge according to the same Spirit, and another faith by the same Spirit, and to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit, and to another affecting the miracles, and to another prophecies and to another the distinguishing of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, and to another type interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distinguishing and distributing to each one individual as he will. You know, it's exciting, and back in uh, the late 70s, Texas put on a large push uh, to push spiritual gifts and to have each church uh, run testing programs whereby we were able to distinguish and find out what our spiritual gifts were. And so I took those tests, and in looking at those, uh, I look back and I think, you know, I wish I had done more. I'd been more attuned to the things that were happening uh, with those but you know, as we look at our lesson today, we want to discover and to know what our spiritual gifts uh, are. We just got through reading a large number of uh, different gifts that the Holy Spirit gives to us as individuals. And so uh, as we look at our lesson today, I hope that this will be made even clearer. It says, this same God who calls us to witness for service equips us for the task. When God has asked you to do something for him, he doesn't just leave you alone. He is willing to be by your side, to help you and to equip you for the task that he has given you. It says God, does, and this text, this quote here is, you hear this a lot, God does not call the qualified, he qualifies those to whom he has called. There are different types of gifts. And you wonder, well, how many do I have to have? How many gifts uh, do I need? Is there one, two, three, four? A large number? But you know, the different gifts that God has given us, he has given them to us to use for his name's honor and glory. You know, our lesson brought out that there was one body and, you know, we've often compared the, the body as being to, uh, you know, you can't operate having the hand try to do the foot's work 
or the foot trying to do the work of the hand. And so in the process, we find that each individual part of our body has a specific task. And so each spiritual gift that the Holy Spirit gives to us that comes from the Father himself is a particular job that he wants us to do. So in the process of doing this, he says, God delights in taking people of different backgrounds with different talents and abilities and imparting to them gifts for service. You know, one person does not required or intended to do it all. He says that we each have different abilities, different talents that he has given us that we might serve him. And so he's imparted to those that we might be individualized in the work that we have to do for Jesus. The members of the body of Christ have different gifts, but everyone is valuable. You know, sometimes we think, well, the gift that I have just isn't significant. It's not all that important. But you know, the very least, even down to the fingernail that you have on your finger, is important to the work and the function of your body. And so the gifts that we have, no matter what we might think is important or unimportant, they are all important to God. You know, I grew up in a church where uh, there were positions in the church that were coveted, like the head elder. And some of you may have experienced this yourselves, that sometimes, you know, we have people that are in office so long that it feels and seems like they are the ones and the only ones who can perform the task of that office. But, you know, in this process... We need to be humble and we need to be willing to share the responsibilities. There's more than one person in this room right here who has the gift of teaching, the gift of preaching, the gift of healing maybe. All of these gifts that God has given us, he's given for us to share so that we might glorify uh, him. But you know, we're told there in uh, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 11, that these are distributed individually as he wills. Now, I take, it that, I take that that means not that I'm going after campaigning and running for office of different gifts and trying to obtain those for myself. God has determined and distributes those according to his will because who knows me better than God himself? And so every gift and every perfect gift comes from above. All from the same spirit and each individual as he is willing. The Bible is clear. God has a special assignment for each one of us in sharing the gospel with others. You know, I don't know what is your comfort zone my comfort zone, I'm out of my comfort zone this morning. And so, you know, you have three TV cameras looking at you. You have a monitor down here that tells you when you start and when you stop. I'm outside my comfort zone. But I do believe that God asked me to teach this lesson today because I want to share with you, my friends, this morning the devil went to no ends to try to keep me from being here this morning. You don't know how many times I was tempted to call and say, I can't make it Sabbath. I don't feel comfortable doing this. And you know, during the course of this week, as I studied and prepared my lesson, I thought of a hundred different reasons why I shouldn't be here this morning. Why I shouldn't be up here sitting on this stage. But you know, I have only one thing. I told God if he wants me here, then that's where I'll be. Because, you know, each of us, in the gifts that he's given us, we must not be afraid to step forward and do the work and tackle the task 
that God has given us for the day. The Holy Spirit imparts gifts as we can serve the body and so that we can witness to the world. You know, we think of we just witness to a small group. Maybe it's family, friends, whether it's at school for our young people, whether it's at church in our Sabbath school classes or in our Sabbath school classes for our young people. Probably one of the greatest witnesses that I can think of and one of the greatest gifts that I can think of also is that we have people in our church who have the gift of teaching. Before the pandemic hit, you could go to any one of our Sabbath school rooms and you could see the adults who were teaching our children. And if you sat in there very long, you would have no doubt in your minds that God had given them the gift of teaching. Well, when did I get this gift? Well, I wasn't just walking down the street or driving in my car, and all of a sudden it hit me. Larry, you have the gift of teaching, I've been told. Others may dispute that fact. Uh, but where did I get this? Where did it come from? At what time did I receive this? Your lesson brought out in uh, Acts, the second chapter. There in verse 40, And with many other words he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be safe from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them, and they continued steadfastly in the, in the apostles, doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. You know, baptism plays a very important part in this because it is at that time that God imparts to us that spiritual gift that he has just for you and I. So exciting to know that when you're baptized, Jesus gives to you your life's work, so to speak. Your ability to share and to minister to those around about you is given to you at that time. Can, you know, there's something about spiritual gifts. They have a purpose. And that purpose is to share Jesus Christ with those who we come in contact with. Spiritual gifts serve several purposes. It says God gives them to people so that they can nurture and strengthen his church to accomplish his ministry. We need you to exercise your gift that God has given you. I need you. Our children need you. Because without that, we lack the leadership in our church to minister to our congregation, to the community, and to those whom we might come in contact with. You know, there's several places, like I said, you'll find these in uh, Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12, uh, and other places in the Bible. And there was one other part about natural, this part here in your lesson talked about the purpose. How many of you feel that you have talents? You have a talent? Okay, I saw one hand. Thank you, honey. And Elizabeth, thank you. I'm quite sure that more than just two of you have talents that God has given you. Well, are these talents spiritual gifts? Some of them can be used in a way that they could be spiritual gifts. But you know, sometimes the talents that we have lend themselves to assisting us and enabling us to perform the spiritual gifts that God has given us. And I think that's exciting. If you have a talent, wouldn't you want to use it? Let me ask you this. At Christmas time, or maybe it's a birthday party or your birthday, you get a gift. And what do you do with that gift? 
Well, we're going to either leave it set underneath a tree, we're going to put it on the table, and we're going to ignore it, or we're going to rip that package open with all haste to find out what's in it. What is in this package, this gift that I've received? I hate to think that when God gives us a gift, a spiritual gift that he's given to us, he's wanting us to discover and to partake in the knowledge that he has for us, to be able to share it with those around about us. We want to open that package as fast as we can. My friend, I want you to be excited about the gift that God has given you. I don't know what that gift may be. I don't know how many of you in here have gone through a spiritual gifts program. But in the process, God will reveal the, what he wants you to do. To, excuse me, to do. But you know, if I don't know what my gift is, and the church nominating committee asks me to do something, whether it be a deacon, whether it be an elder, a Sabbath school teacher, maybe they're asking me to be a janitor to clean the sanctuary. Whatever it may be, I can give it a try, and maybe it is or maybe it isn't my gift. But if it is my gift, God will bless me. And you know the feeling that you'll have? You'll be so enthused and ex just excited about doing it. You'll, want to, you'll, want, you'll just want more. And God wants to give us more if we're willing to accept what he has done for us. So let's not be afraid to venture out to discover our spiritual gifts that God has given us. In Luke 11, uh, 13, verse 13, If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? You know, when... You ask God for the gift that he has for you. Is he going to give you a snake or a scorpion or something like that that would do you harm? You know, <clears throat> he gives to each of us that which he wills us to have. In James 1.5 it says, If any of you lack wisdom... Let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally, without reproach, and it would be given to him. You know, whenever I pray, and I'm going through the books of Daniel and Revelation over again, I always include in my prayer that God will give me wisdom, that he will give me understanding, and that the Holy Spirit will interpret that which I read. You know, we have those in our congregation that even though they may not recognize it or want to admit it, they have these gifts that we've been talking about. The gift of wisdom. We have some extremely intelligent people in our church. And that excites me. Because what God has given you, use, develop, and share with us and those of us who want to learn and to understand the scriptures. The gift of healing. You know, I have been through a lot and gone through quite a few doctors. And in the process that I've looked at each one, some, I believe, had the gift of healing. And there's others I've been to, I wasn't too sure. It kind of had a little bit of a question mark in my mind. It says, where are you going? Where are you leading me? What are you doing for me? We have nurses in our congregation that have the gift of healing. 
They also have the gift of comforting those who are sick and those who are in sorrow. Are you excited about the gift that God has given to you? How are you going to use that gift? Or this lesson, which we have, are covering here today, if you have wisdom, are you just going to let it sit on the shelf? I'm not going to share with anyone else. I'm not very smart. I don't consider myself to be super intelligent. Maybe you're not. But the wisdom that God has given you, I'm telling you right now, is super intelligence. The part that God wants you to play in our church and through what we are going through right now, we need to be a shining light, an example to the community. We need to be the standard barriers of what God can do for us through his Holy Spirit. We need to stand, be the standard barriers for the wisdom and knowledge that he's given us of scriptures, of the knowledge of wisdom, of healing, of teaching, of preaching, of speaking in tongues. You know, we're going to have a baptism today, and that baptism today is going to be interpreted so that those of a language which I do not understand for others in our congregation who do. You know, we're blessed uh, having the ability to have people in our congregation who have the gift of interpretation to interpret that which is spoken into another language and given the others the ability to hear and to understand. Carolyn and I come, uh, came to uh, Keene from the Richard Seventh-day Adventist Church. One of the most diverse churches I've ever been, in my, been to in my life. At the time we were there, there were over 38 different nationalities. And as I have Carol and I have went back. I couldn't imagine the number of people there and the different nationalities that are there, all worshiping together, seeking God's guidance and the love that he has for them so that they can share it with someone else. You know, I remember as they were doing this, we were they were interpreting the Spanish uh, people that had gotten uh, units for that they could uh, hear and understand. Before long, they had their own Sabbath school class in the choir loft. It wasn't too many months, and the choir loft was so full, they had to move them to the fellowship hall. It wasn't too long, and the fellowship hall was so full, they had to go out and rent a church. I had the opportunity to speak at that church, and as I was speaking in English, the pastor was interpreting in Spanish for me. And finally I turned to him, Pastor, how come you have more to say than I do? It seems like it takes more words in Spanish than it did in English to get the point across. He kind of looked at me and smiled and says, Well, Larry, I did have to embellish it just a little bit. And I just told him, and I told him, thank you. Spiritual gifts are qualities that God imparts to us so that we can serve him effectively. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 6. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. These are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. These are diversities of activities, but it's the same God who works all. Where do we stand today? We need to grow our gifts. How far does your garden get if you don't water it? 
How well does it grow? You know, my wife has a tomato plant. And this tomato plant is probably about this tall. It has all kinds of blooms on it every now and then. And then the blooms disappear, but I never see any tomatoes. What's wrong? Well, if you find out, you let Carolyn know. You know, too many times we're kind of like that tomato plant. We, have, we seemingly have a lot of growth. We may even have a bloom now and then. But we don't produce any fruit. You know, I was, in, I was really intrigued, and I didn't know this until, I have to admit, I didn't know this till just until I probably studied the Sabbath school lesson a few months before. That uh, our lesson in uh, Thursdays was growing our gifts. And it talked about the uh, gentleman who was uh, traveling to a far country. And so he called his servants and he gave to each of his servants a portion to one servant, he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. Now, I didn't really realize until I looked it up and I researched about how much a talent really was. I'd always thought that it was just an ins- insignificant amount that this gentleman had left with each one, and then they would invest it and come back with multiple talents. And one source that I looked at, it said that a talent was about, and Pastor, you may have to correct me here, I believe was about a year's wages. That's correct. And then I got to looking at what that was like. You know, you got five talents. That's five years' wages. You know, that was a lot of money, probably. Two talents, two years' wages. And then the one talent, Only one year's wages, probably not that significant. But then I looked at the uh, Bible, uh, some of the commentaries, and it talked a little bit about what those talents would be like today. And my friend, we're talking in the six-digit figures. And when you get up into the five talents, we could even get up into the nine-digit figures. I mean, it's astronomical, the amount of that pot was entrusted to them. You know, we can be like the gentleman who had five talents. He went out and he invested it, and when he came back, he had five more. Two came back with two more. Or we can be like the one who was given only one talent probably not considered significant, but still yet a sizable amount of money. But that wasn't the whole point. The point was that God wants us to take the talents he's given us, the gifts that he has given to us. He wants us to take them. He wants us to multiply them. And if we multiply them, for God's grace and his worship of his children, this sanctuary would be full today, even with the pandemic that we're in. We'd probably even have to spread these chairs out even more to keep social distancing. I have a lot to do. I have a lot lot of work to do. You know, I'm bound to determine that the devil was not going to keep me from coming this morning, even though I have a little bit of a raspy throat because it's been almost, what, three months since I taught a Sabbath school class? I'm not used to, my wife and I don't talk enough to get my voice box, I guess, uh, tuned up for something like this. I guess we'll have to start. 
But you know the whole thing. If you do not use your gift, what happens to it? It's taken away, isn't it? If you received a fantastic Christmas present, would you want your spouse or your child or someone to come up and just take it away from you? The gift that God has given is more precious than anything that we could give each other today. Your lesson ended on the note your gifts will grow as you use them. Remember also that the gifts of the Spirit are given for God's glory and not your own. He gave you leadership roles not for your glory, but for His. He gave you the ability to teach, to heal the sick, to proclaim His Word, not for our glory but for his glory. And so in this lesson that he's given us today, use your spiritual gifts, develop your talents, and give God the glory because it is only through his grace that we are able to do that which he has given for us today. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Our most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gifts that you you have bestowed upon us through your Holy Spirit. We pray, Lord, that you'll help us to make those gifts grow for the development of your worship with your people in this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.